Okay, guys, this is part two. Just a couple more problems that I'm going to do with you on the board that's going to help you with your homework. Okay, so let's look at the first one. We have negative 4x minus 3 equals is negative 11x plus 16. So the first thing we have to do is get the constants on one side. So let's add 3 to this side. Of course, that means I have to add 3 to that side, right? So whatever I do on the left, I have to do on the right. This is going to cancel, leaving us 4, negative 4x equals, we're going to have negative 11x plus 19. Now what am I going to do? I need to get that 11x to the other side. So I'm going to add 11x to each side. When I do that, this is going to cancel, leaving us the 19. On this side, what are we going to get? We're going to have Think it through. Some of you are just trying to wait for me to give you the answer. We're going to have 7x, okay? Now, what are we going to do next? We're going to divide by 7 because we want, again, we're still trying to get our x by itself. This is going to cancel, leaving us 19 over 7, okay? Remember, you're getting the constants on one side, the x is on the other, and working your way down to solve to x. Look at this next problem. It looks far more complicated than it really is. All we're gonna do is take this one step at a time. Look at the things that we can answer, and then we're going to think about our orders of operation, okay? So the first thing we're gonna say is, we want the opposite of the opposite of negative four. Well, the easiest way to say this is, okay, here's the four. How many signs do we have? One, two, three. So that means that the four is positive or negative? Negative, okay? Plus two squared. Well, two times two is four. Then we have minus three squared. Three times three is nine. Now we have to add the third root of negative 64. So what's the third root of 64. You have to say what, first of all, what's the question? The question is, what can I multiply to itself three times and get the number 64? Okay, well, four times four is 16. And 16 times four is 64, okay? Now, because it, we, it wants us to add a what? We're going to add, since we're looking for the root, it's going to be a negative 4. Okay? So we're going to make this minus 4 because we don't want to bring that. Since it's going to be a negative 4, we're going to add, we're going to change that. Okay? Now, we've got, we're going to have the third root of 125 over 1,000. So we have to find the third root of 125 and the third root of 1,000, okay? In order to do that, we're going to say the third root of 125 is five, okay? That is five. The third root of 1,000 is 10. But what can I do to five tenths? Well, I can reduce it to one half. Now, because this is already a positive number, we're gonna put minus one half. Yeah. Okay, now we simply do what? Using algebraic addition, we finish our problem. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 0 plus negative 9 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. Negative 13 plus a negative 1 half is a negative 13 and 1 half. Okay, so we have negative 13, whoops, <laughs> 13, my that quite long enough, and one half. You might have said it was 20, because it's oftentimes in algebra, we leave it as the improper fractions, 27, negative 27 over two, okay? Now, two of you have contacted me and said, Mr. Turner, I'm still struggling with this cut theory of the roots, okay? It is nothing more, guys, than estimating, okay? I need to estimate 
what the third root of 800 is. It's not going to come out nice and even, okay? When I did the third root of 125, first of all, I've done it enough now that we've done it in class that you probably know that, oh, I know that it's five, okay? Because we've done it so many times. Now, when you get a number like 800, it doesn't come out nice and even, so you have to think it through. Well, what is nine to the third root? Nine times nine is 81. 81 times nine is 729. Say, Mrs. Turner, why did you pick nine? I arbitrarily picked the number, okay? So that I, based on what I already know, I know that five cubed is 125. I know that 10 cubed is 1,000. So I know my answer is between five and 10, okay? And I know that 800 is a lot closer to 1,000 than it is to 125, so I picked nine, okay? The second thing I'm gonna do is remind myself that 10 cubed, because 800 is more than 729, is 1,000. That tells me my answer is nine point something, okay? Since it's gonna be nine point something here, okay? And my problem simply tells me, I'm trying to find it here, find it to the nearest whole number, I have to say, is it closer to 700 or closer to 1,000? So if I put this down as 9.5, because that's what it would have to be to multiply it up to, so I'd round it to 10, it's gonna take me too close. It's gonna take me further away. It's gonna take me over my number of 800, okay? So that means when I round this, it's gonna be about, notice those are squiggle lines, those are not straight. It's about nine. All I did was take what I know, and I used this number here, 125 uh, to, the third, to the, third, the third power, okay, or cubed, is 125, so five, to, I said that backwards, five to the cubed is 125, or the third root of 125 is five. And the third, and the third root of 1,000 is 10. So that helped me know that my answer needs to be somewhere between there. It's just a cut and dry. It's kind of a guessing game of where it lands. Okay, that's all there is to it. I hope this helps you do your homework today. And I hope it helps you uh, get a little more understanding of what we've been doing. Um, I will give you an opportunity to retake, not the exact test, uh, but I am going to give a a second test on the same material uh, to make sure you've got a better grasp of it now. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, text me or email. We wanna make sure you understand. Have a good day, guys.